Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of Sir Astro's The Lord of the Rings painting series. In this episode, I'll be painting Boromir from the Spreading War expansion to Fantasy Flight Games The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth. For my colour choices, I've taken inspiration from the beautiful character art by Magelli Villeneuve. As with the rest of the heroes, I'll be taking my time with Boromir, and I'll be indulging in some nice non-metallic metal effects along the way. As usual, you can find chapter links to help navigate the video. Let's begin. You can see that I've primed the miniature in black, followed with some xenophil highlights supplied from above. And I've also provided some basing paste and a few cork rocks, as detailed in the earlier episodes. To begin the painting, I chose to start by painting the whites of the eyes using scale colours Nakar. And then using some black to paint the surrounding area and place the pupils. I don't always get this right first time, and may have to go back and forth a little before things look right. I'm now painting the skin using pink flesh mixed with burnt sienna umber, and I've also chosen to desaturate things a little with a touch of black. For the hair, I'm using a roughly equal mix of black and petroleum grey, and I've chosen to begin placing my initial areas of highlight with the addition of some walnut. Here I'm adding the walnut to create a global highlight towards the top of the head, and also for some of the individual strands of hair. I'm also carefully drawing in the eyebrows. Whilst the skin tone is still fresh on the palette, I've decided to add the skin highlights, firstly up to a mix of golden flesh and pink flesh, and I'll then be mixing in some vanilla white for the brightest points. There really isn't much room to manoeuvre here. This is the pure golden flesh and pink flesh mix. And I'm now adding the vanilla white. Here I chose to glaze a little primary red into the cheek and nose area. And these are my last couple of highlights. I'm now returning to push the highlights on the hair, where I began by mixing some white sands into the base tone. I then decided to also add a little Irocco to prevent the tone from turning too grey. Next I'm painting the horn using a mix of black and field grey.
and for the golden details I'm providing a base tone of Gobi Brown. We could also paint the opening with black. I'm now using a roughly equal mix of black and abyssal blue to paint all of the areas of dark fabric. I'm also using this for the scabbard. For the belt and various straps, I'm using red leather darkened with a little black. I'm now painting the armour using black mixed with some emerald green. The green will only really begin to show once we start lightening the tone for the highlights however, so a base colour of pure black here would also be fine. It looks like I missed a bit of strap here on the left hand. I'm also painting these little metallic details as well as the sword. Finally I'm painting the cloak where I'm creating a shadow tone using a roughly equal mix of graphene grey and field grey and I'm using nakar for the highlight tone. Here I'm mixing the shadow tone and I'm now adding some nakar to create a mid tone. I'm now placing the shadow tone into the main areas of shadow which are clearly marked by the zenithal pattern of highlights. We can then use the midtone to paint the lighter areas. This will appear somewhat darker once dry. I'm now building up the highlights working up to pure nakar, and I don't mind a bit of a textured look here. At this point I've chosen to paint the base by picking out the rocks in grey and providing a light dry brush followed with some Agrax Earth Shade. We're now ready to provide the rest of the highlights. I'm starting with the horn where I'm adding some birch to the base tone followed with some white sands for the brightest highlights.
and for the gold's detailing, I'll be highlighting up with Sahara Yellow, Tenera Yellow and White Sands. I'm not sure if this part is supposed to be metal or leather. This is now pure Tonera Yellow. And I'm now adding some white sands for the brightest glints. Moving on to the leather straps, I'm adding some white sands and a touch of Tenera Yellow to the red leather and black base tone. I'd like to build up a nice bit of scratchy texture here. After building the highlights and texture up, I often like to brush over some thinned base tone to tie things together, but I'll generally avoid the edges which I want to remain nice and bright. The last area to highlight before moving on to the metalwork is the black fabric and the scabbard, where I'm simply adding some white sands to the base tone. For the armour, I began by mixing some white into the black and emerald green base tone to create my initial gradient. We can see however that adding the white reduces the levels of yellow in the mix, creating a more bluish tone. For a cold steel look this would be fine, but I've decided to mix in a little earth green to warm things up a bit and more closely capture the look of the character art. You don't have to use these exact paints of course, but I do find the scale colour artist paints lend themselves well to working in the non-metallic metal style. Once I'm happy with the rough gradient, I'm starting to lay down my initial mid-tones. We can be pretty sketchy here as this is just the foundation for the highlights to come. I'm now starting to gradually push up the values. For the larger areas like the chest and shoulders, I like to create quite an irregular profile of light and shade, and we shouldn't be afraid to just create some beautiful shapes.
fully stretching out, exploring and enjoying these midtones is a key part of this style of non-metallic metal painting. I was happy to leave the legs in a bit more of a rough and sketchy state, as they're not going to be the main focal point of the model. For me, it's the gleaming breastplate that I really want to draw the eye. I might really thin the paint further if I want to create a more blended look. I find that there's something quite magical about the moment when the illusion of shining metal begins to take shape. Here I'm glazing some of the earth green into the lower parts of the rounded forms, such as the chest and shoulders. This tints the metal with a more earthy tone, suggesting the natural reflections of the environment. And I'm continuing to push the levels for the brightest glints of light. I'm also now highlighting the various little rivets and buckles. We can even create the suggestion of the nearby straps being reflected in the armour. I'm using the same tones for the metal details on the scabbard. And here I'm applying a very subtle glaze of light ultramarine, quite selectively into some of the mid-tones. This of course helps give the impression of the sky being reflected in the armour, and adds yet one more subtle bit of colour variation.
Next I'm painting the sword using the same grayscale as the armour. The sculpting is a little chunky here, and the edges aren't especially crisp, but I'm initially just trying to decide where to place my main highlights and gradients. I've decided to place quite a deep shadow tone here to create maximum contrast with the primary highlight on the adjacent edge. With my placement of light and shadow mapped out, I'm now just pushing the contrast and sharpening the edges. Here I'm just adding a more brownish tint to the underside of the blade. And I'm increasing the levels of blue for the more upturned areas. I also like to add some quite dense glints or notches along the edge of the blade. This once again is a thin glaze of the light ultramarine. Here I chose to paint the oval detail on the handle with the same colours we used for the gold on the horn. I'm now darkening the line that runs around the edge of the cloak. And doing a little tidying up. I've also decided to add some muddy weathering to the cloak, using walnut mixed with some black as well as some birch to create a range of values. As well as discrete patches of mud, I've also thinned this down to create a gentle dusty gradient. I'm now finishing the miniature off with some grass tufts by Gamers Grass and some leaf litter. And this completes Boromir. Thank you for joining me, I do hope you've enjoyed the episode. Don't forget you can find a range of free PDF guides over at sarastro.com for many of the other figures from the game. As always, my very special thanks go to my kind patrons for supporting this work, I really couldn't do it without them. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth. Happy painting!